I was born with a defective lung. I lived with asthma pumps for at least 20 years of my life. My physical growth was physically stunted. Hi, this is Tim Gray, Senior Pastor of the City of Zion, and welcome to another episode of Phronesis. Today, we're going to do something very different. Today, I am going to lead you in what we have called the I Am Confessions. The I Am Confessions. What does that mean? Remember when Moses was saying, you're sending me on this great errand, um, who should I say sent me? The introduction of God to, um, through Moses to the people was, tell them I am I am sent you. I am that I am. Now there's so many ways that you can interpret that, but the end point is this. If God says that he is the I am, am, so are we. Again, this is not an exaggeration. I am not trying to be blasphemous. Let me read something to you. First John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. I will read verses 17 um, to 18, but the emphasis is actually 17. Message translation again. God is love. When we take up permanent residence in a life of love, we live in God and God lives in us, okay? This way, love has the run of the house, becomes at home and mature in us so that we are free of worry on judgment day. We're getting to the sweet part. He says, our standing in the world is identical with Christ. Actually, I'll stop there. He says, our standing in the world is identical. That's the word I want you to note. There was a case, um, a movie that I watched some time ago and was supposed to be a replica of an actual case that had occurred where they someone had committed a crime and they had his DNA all over the crime scene. So they took the, the, the DNA and they went to his house. It was a doctor. When they got there, they saw that he was in the house with his twin brother and that they immediately knew this was going to be a problem. They knew who committed the crime, which one of the twins had committed the crime, but do you know they could not use the DNA to convict him? Why? Because the DNA is about 99% accurate, right? It's not 100%. But the challenge is, because him and his brother were identical, that DNA that is 99% accurate was also similar, uh, almost exact DNA of his identical brother. So they could not use the DNA to convict him. Do you know in the realm of the spirit, in the eyes of the devil, your DNA and that of Jesus are the same. They are the same. We are the ones that make the distinction. Our thinking makes the distinction. Our behaviors make the distinction. In the realm of the spirit, God does not make that distinction. When you show up, the devils know that God has showed up. The problem is, do you know it? They tremble when the believer shows up because when the believer shows up, God Almighty, hey, Abakasolia, God Almighty just showed up on the screen. He just showed up there. I want to lead you in the kind of confessions we should be making. So I will say it quickly. You will repeat after me. I will try and give you a pace so that we can run through this. And maybe this is something you want to save. I think on the YouTube channel of Phronesis, you will also find this place there so that you can download it and you can use it for your personal life because if you do this every day, <laughs> look, I did this. I was born with a defective lung. I lived with asthma pumps for at least 20 years of my life. My physical growth was physically stunted because of it. I began making these confessions. I did not know when my lung grew out. I did not know. It, I just realized no more asthma pumps. Not because I'm, I'm pushing my faith, but because suddenly I could breathe. And the, 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 the dysfunction, the physical dysfunction that the x-rays showed was no longer there. Why? Because when you awake into this reality, everything in your life begins to match that which is in the heart and in the life 
of Jesus. I've said too much. Repeat after me. Let's go. As a believer, I am in Christ. Therefore, I am a new creation. I am saved. Through the blood of Jesus, I am clean. I am forgiven. I am not condemned. I am loved unconditionally. I am the apple of my father's eye. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am who God says I am. I am the heir with Christ. I am a joint heir with Christ. Hey, not just an heir. I am a joint heir with Christ. I am accepted in the beloved. I am filled with the Holy Ghost. I am filled with the power of God. I am sound in mind. I am the mind of Christ. Not just I have. I am the mind of Christ. I am whole, nothing missing, nothing broken. I am whole, nothing missing, nothing broken. I am prospering even as my soul prospers. I am holy. I am righteous. I do not yield myself as an instrument of unrighteousness unto sin. Therefore, I am not forsaken. I am God's seed. I am, oh, let's do that one again. I am God's seed. I am loved by God even as he loves Jesus. Oh, that's a silly moment. I am loved by God even as he loves Jesus. I am enough. I need nothing for God through Christ has given me all things. I am enough. I am complete. In Christ, I am one with God. <laughs> I am supernaturally cared for. I am full of God. I am not empty. I am righteous. Therefore, sin has no dominion over me. I am at peace with God and with men. I am highly favored. I am not cursed, but I am abundantly blessed. I am above only and not beneath. I am blessed in the field of my employment. I am blessed in the field of my business. I am blessed in my coming in. I am blessed in my going out. I am above only. I am not beneath. By the stripes of Jesus and the power of his word, I am healed. I am chosen. I am royal. I am called. These are some of the I am confessions that I stand on that so many others across the globe right now stand on. And we have seen its manifestation of power like you can never imagine in our lives. You as a believer, you are not supposed to be seeking miracles. You are supposed to be the one delivering miracles. And this you will do because you are who he says you are. Thank you. This has been Tim Grage of the City of Zion Santon. Catch you again soon on Flanessis. Bye for now. There's a song I really love so much, uh, which says that even when it doesn't seem like it's working, he is working and he never stops. He never stops. I want you to know that no matter what you're going through, when you speak the word, when you take the place of authority, he'll always work. God bless you. Have a good day. I am Humphrey Oseni, and welcome to this great broadcast. It's an honor to be here to share the word in power. And I tell you, your life will never be the same. I'll be continuing my series on, we are God's masterpiece. One thing that God did 
Now we need to recognize is that he put us inside his name and he put his name inside us. You know, like what the man of God said, he said you can't separate Jesus from his name. Jesus and his name are one. And the reason that we have the name of Jesus is because we are one with him. We dwell in him and he dwells in us. That's the mystery. Paul said the great mystery is Christ in you. When we begin to understand these truths, victory becomes inevitable. As a believer, you don't have to live a yo-yo life. Today you're up, tomorrow you're down. You're not sure whether God hears you. You're not sure if your prayers will work. No, no, no. The Bible says he causes us to triumph always. Not to triumph most of the time. Not to triumph half of the time. To triumph what? Always. And the word of God cannot be broken. The Bible also says we are more. Not just a bit of conquerors. Not just a conqueror. We are what? More than conquerors. And that is the truth. You may not be experiencing it because you don't believe it. If you believe, you will receive. In the book of John, it says, he that believes what has. He that believes experiences. He that believes takes what belongs to him. Now, I want to share something that will really change your life. And that's the revelation of the name. Many years ago, the Lord told me that most of my people pray as if the name of Jesus is a magic wand. As if we are just worms in the dust, we are weak, and we need to call upon that great name while we are weak. No, the name is in you, and the name is you. Hallelujah. Because when a wife marries a husband, she takes up his name. And when you come into Christ, we are the bride of Christ, we take up his name. Not just name figuratively, we take up his name literally. And we take up what his name has, all the power, the righteousness, everything that the name means is in you and I. Hallelujah. The Greek word for name is onoma, and it depicts somebody's authority, identity, righteousness, character, and glory. Hallelujah. So if you have his name, what does that mean? It means you have his, his identity. If you have his identity, it means you have his authority. So, beloved of God, you're not ordinary anymore. Don't live in that false identity. Oh, I'm so broke. Oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. Oh, I'm so weak. Oh, I'm so addicted. Oh, I'm so that. No, no, no. That's a false identity. Oh, I'm sick. I'm weak. I'm just a nobody. No, that's a false identity. Your true identity is the part of you that is born again, Christ in you. And your true identity is righteousness of God, more than a conqueror, the head and not the tail, above only and never beneath. Greater is he that is in you. So your true identity is Christ. That's why the word of God is a mirror. So like I said, the name of Jesus is not a magic wand. It's not something you just invoke. No, the name of Jesus is part of your nature. It's your identity. It's who you are. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ on earth in, in the gospel says that he said, everything I did, I did it in the name of my father. Now, what did he mean? Did he mean that every time he prayed, he'll say, in the name of the father, rise up and walk? No, he never did that. What it means was that he spoke as if it's the Father speaking. If you do a good study of the etymology or the meaning of the word in his name, it literally means in his place. It literally means as his representative. It literally means that you, you, you are wearing his shoes, you are in his position on earth. Hallelujah. So in his name means that you are doing it as if God is doing it. That's why Jesus said, that every miracle, everything he did, he did it in his father's name. He did it as if it's the father that was doing it. And that's why in John 5, 19, he says, what I see my father do, I do. And whatsoever the father does, the son does likewise. You see, he knew he was representing his father. He knew that anyone that sees him should see the father. That's why Adam was created for. God said, let's make man an image and after a likeness. Man was created to be God's authoritative representative. God made you and I to be his representative. That's God's blueprint. That's God's design. That's God's plan for man. That when a man is speaking, it's God speaking. When a man is laying hands, it's God's laying hands. That's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, he says, I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. I will talk to them. Hallelujah. Man was created to be God's image. Man was created to be God's representative. So child of God, when you face a problem, that problem has only met Jesus. When you face a storm, knowing who you are, that storm has only met Jesus. Unless it can beat Jesus, it cannot beat you. The only thing that can beat you is what can beat Jesus. And since nothing can beat Jesus, 
nothing can beat you. Nothing can bind Jesus. Nothing can beat Jesus. Nothing can hold Jesus down. Jesus can never have an unanswered prayer. So God designed you not to have an unanswered prayer. In fact, Jesus doesn't ask God, oh, heal the sick person. I never saw Jesus do that. Jesus speaks to the sick person as if it's God speaking. He'll just say, rise up and walk. He'll say, take your bed and walk. He'll say, stretch forth your hand. He's speaking like God. And that's what God created man to be. He told Adam, I create you, let's make man in our image and after our likeness. And what? Let them have dominion. Because it takes dominion to represent God. So like I mentioned earlier, I looked at the 10, he gave them power and said, go to all the villages. Go and heal the sick. In Matthew chapter 10, he gave them power and said, go. Hallelujah. And Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he said, wait to receive power. So God has given us power so we can represent him. And in order to represent him, we have to have his own power, his own authority. That's why he has seated us on the throne, that he can showcase. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 7, he can exhibit his limitless love. The reason why you have power and authority is because of his love. The reason why you should never be defeated is because of his love. The reason why you should never be broke busted or disgusted or complaining is because of his love you are not meant to be asking god to heal the sick you are meant to go out like in his name as his representative and you heal the sick he told moses why do you cry to me stretch out your rod represent me i've made you a god to pharaoh you see when we understand who we are we know that when the goliaths come <laughs> and that's why david had such faith he knew that goliath wasn't fighting the teenager he knew that goliath was coming against god so in Psalm 27 verse 1, he says, God is the strength of my life. Now there's a big difference between say God gives me strength. A lot of people identify with the fact God gives me strength, gives me grace. I don't pray for grace. I have grace. I have received. Romans 5, 17, those who have taken possession, that word receive is lambano in the Greek, to take ownership, to take possession like you're taking your property. And it literally means to take possession for yourself. Hallelujah. You've got to take possession of your authority and identity. As he, so am I. When I speak, it's God speaking. Whatever I do, I do it in the name. I do it as if Jesus is doing it. I do it in God's authority, power, and name. So, and when you do that, you walk as a king upon the earth. Every knee will bow before you because you are representing him. And you are doing it as if it's him doing it. God bless you. And keep the switch of faith turned on. Hello and welcome, this is Dr. Tich Tanya Nyua coming to you on From Nessus, a program designed to give you wisdom for living a successful life. And I believe that God is really challenging you, encouraging you, and empowering you for success with the series that we've been running. I've been talking about Destined for Greatness. I want to challenge you and the greatness that is within you. God has placed greatness in you. The seed of greatness is in every child of God. Mediocrity ought not to be a part of your life. You can and challenge and stir yourself up to greatness. So what we're doing is getting excerpts from here, teaching from it. And you know, this has really changed my life. This was the, the study of my life for many, many years. And that helped me position myself for greatness. And I want to challenge you. Let's go on a journey together. Get some coaching. Get some investment. Get some input into your life that will position you to live a significant life. Our foundational scriptures, I love foundational scriptures. Everything that I do has foundations. And foundations must be the word of God. And Paul said, for me to say the same things twice is not grievous, but for you it is profitable. So we repeat so that it gets established in your mind and you develop neural pathways that will take you on that journey of success. So Proverbs 18 verse 6, 16 says, a man's gift will make room for him and take him before great men. God is saying to you, I want to take you to a place of greatness, a place of influence, a place of success. Then the second scripture is Proverbs 22 verse 29. Do you see a man who's diligent, prompt in his work? He shall not stand before obscure men, but he shall stand before kings. Do you understand before great people? Do you want to be an influencer? Do you want to be a voice in your generation and not an echo? Well, follow the wisdom of the Bible and you will be equipped. We've given you six principles thus far, so today we're going to principle number seven and eight. Number one, we said perception. Number two, we said vocabulary. Number three, we said perception in the ears as opposed to just perception of the eye. Number four, we said your habits. Number five, we said your level of revelation. And number six, we said 
change your level of motivation. Very simple principles, yet profound and life-changing. Now let's go to number seven. Successful people have a motivation level that is greater than others. A motivation level that is greater than others. Now, you can you can tell where you will be in the next five years, 10 years, 20 years of your life based on your level of motivation. How they say this, you know, we have a generation of people that are very slow and lethargic. Young people walk so slowly, they, 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 they're in the university and it takes them so long to walk from one class to another. I decided many years ago, and if you ever see me, I never walk slowly. Whenever I'm going anywhere, I always increase my speed because that gives me a mental picture that I'm going somewhere to do something. I have a high level of motivation. I sleep late, I work late, I work hard, and and and. You know, I just drive myself. I, I generally run a, a 17, 18 hour day. Every single day I'm, I'm working and doing something for a minimum 17, 18 hours. Then you have a couple of hours of sleep. I know I need to manage the sleep part, but I've got so much to do and so little time. So you need to find yourself in a place where your motivation levels must be higher than average people. Otherwise, you're going to be average. And they tell us 95 percent of the people that are living on this planet are going to live an average life and consider average living normal. Only five percent of the people watching this program and walking on this planet are ever going to become high achievers. They are the contrarians. They are the ones that push themselves beyond. And one of the key factors is this one. They are willing to motivate themselves at a level higher than everybody else. Is that you today? What, what level of motivation do you need to change and shift? Are you a couch potato just watching movie after movie, program after program, series after series? Or are you positioning yourself to pursue your vision and go after your dreams and go after that which is on the inside of you? Principle number eight. Well, you've done so well. You've come this far. Congratulations. Coaching that is really designed to equip you for personal success. Number eight, successful people have habits that that others don't have. Now, this comes to what I call lifestyle. What is your lifestyle? You need to do a lifestyle audit. And I'm not talking about the lifestyle audit done by, by the revenue authorities when they see you spending a lot of money on cars and so on. I'm talking about your lifestyle. Check. And who do you invest time with? What books are you reading? What content are you consuming? What habits are you incorporating into your daily lifestyle? What, what is your lifestyle? Are you living healthy? eating healthy, living a lifestyle of good, clean relationships. It is your lifestyle audit that will begin to tell us whether your habits are going to move you to a place of significance or you're going to remain in the place of mediocrity. I really want to challenge you with this. But in order to make this very contextual, let me give you a couple of key things here. Um, I want you to take five minutes, either today or later on today, take five minutes and ask yourself these four questions, four simple questions. Question number one, what giftings do I have? What giftings do I have? Get a piece of paper and take a minute to write down as fast without thinking deeply. Just write down, I can talk, I can communicate, I can write, I can sing, I can dance, I can manage, I can administer, I can manufacture, I can paint, I can draw. I don't know what giftings you have. Write it down. What giftings do I have? Number two, what abilities have I acquired over the years? The ability to connect well, to manage relationships well, to sell, to, to connect with people? What abilities have you acquired? The opposite of the question is, what abilities should I acquire? Uh, that's another brilliant conversation for another day. Question number three, what potentials do I possess? When I discovered I was a good storyteller, good communicator, I realized that I had the potential to go into, the, into filmmaking. And that pushed me. And our first film is coming out very, very, very soon. So I'm excited about that. I didn't know when I was a baby that I had the potential to be a filmmaker, creating feature, feature films that shall go right across the continents. But now it's happening. Potentials. What potentials do I possess? Question number four. What are my strengths? What are my strengths? What am I strong at? What am I good at? If you'll ask yourself these questions, man, you're setting yourself up for success. If you need help with these, hey, I'm a coach. I'm a coach. If you go to my website, drtitch.com, you'll be able to get in touch with me and we will take you on a coaching journey that will move you from 
current reality to desired reality. From mediocrity to significance and notoriety, God will make your name great and make you highly successful and influential. Why? Because guess what? You are destined for greatness and we want to unlock the greatness that is within you and help you go on a journey to redefining your life and redefining your generation. Thank you so much for joining us on Frenesis. We love you. Stay connected. Follow us on all social media platforms and you will be empowered to live a high impact life. Thank you so much, Dr. Tichia. God bless you. Hello everyone, my name is Cherise, I come from Pretoria. My name is Ruth Ajayi, I'm from Nigeria. My name is Satara Khan, I'm from Port Elizabeth. My name is Pastor Mashan Mpatlele, my wife and I are pastor in a church in Midland, South Africa. I'm a second year student at KBSM. KBSM has truly transformed our spiritual life and our marriage life as well. The Bible School has really helped me a lot. I'd like to welcome you and encourage you to take the step to come and enroll with Kingdom Bible School of Ministry. I'm encouraged you today to sign up. We encourage you to join this Bible school. And please remember it's free. Dr. Abraham S. Raja here. You've heard it all from so many different people. What are you waiting for? Join our free international Bible school today. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto the Father except by me. Also speaking, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He is knocking at the door of your heart even now. He says, If anyone will open their heart, open the door, I will come unto him and I will dine with him. Jesus wants to dine with you. Giving your life to Christ or accepting more accurately the life of Christ is so easy. It is as easy as making a simple confession. Can I lead you in that confession today? If you are out there, you are saying, I want to make Jesus my Lord and my Savior. I want to accept him into my heart. All you need to do right now is repeat after me. Can we do this together? Bow your hearts, repeat after me. Dear God, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and I believe with my heart that you raised him from the dead. Therefore, from this moment, I am born again. Thank you, Father, for accepting me into your family. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, you are born again as described by Jesus in John chapter three from verse three. And I welcome you to the family of God. Right now, find a Bible-believing church, connect so that you will grow. I will also ask you, send us a message so that we know that you have made this decision and somebody can reach out to you to help you on your journey. Again, welcome to the family of God.